welcome to the stage, General Manager, Microsoft Robotics, Tandy Trower. Hello, everyone. You know, robots really spark our imagination, but they've kind of been the kind of stuff of science fiction that haven't really proved to be much of a reality for us. They're kind of like those flying cars that we were all supposed to have by now. But Microsoft is tr going to try to change all that by creating a platform that will enable robots to be in our homes and in our workspaces. You know, Bill Gates reflected on this over the, over the past year. He, in a published issue of uh, Scientific American, he talked about how the robotics industry today looks a lot like the uh, PC industry did in the late 70s. Well, let's remind ourselves what the PC industry looked like in the late 70s. Well, the big iron, the big part of computing back in those days was controlled by computers that looked like this. Large mainframe computers that were very expensive. They consumed a lot of power. They required special operators. They weren't very personal at all. But then they were quickly eclipsed by a new, in 1975, and we could see this in the uh, January issue of Popular Electronics at that time, the announcement of the emergence of a new business in computing called personal computing that was heralded by the MIT Altair. But this computer doesn't quite look like what you have on your desktop today. It has a lot of flashing lights and was programmed by switching buttons on it. So it quickly evolved, though, to the next generation of computers that you may know if you're old enough to be in this industry. The Apple II, the Commodore PET, the Radio Shack Model 1. These were 8-bit processors with 64K of addressable memory and often saved their programs to standard cassette tape. Not very advanced compared to what we have, but they were also quickly replaced by 1981 by the IBM PC, which became the catalyst for the kinds of technology we use today. So too we at Microsoft believe that the next generation of robotics is evolving in the same kind of way. Today, robotics has been the big engine of industry, and it requires very expensive equipment that consumes a great deal of power that require very special operators, not very personal at all. But we believe you already have seen the beginning, the evolution of this industry, like in the PC industry, with things like the iRobot Roomba vacuum cleaner and its many cousins. Also, there are a variety of toys that are coming onto the marketplace, such as the Wowie Robo Sapien that sold over 3 million units in two years' time, or the Pleo that was shipped this year, or the very popular Lego Mindstorms that went from an 8-bit toy technology to 32-bit plus Bluetooth. So we see this kind of evolution already. To help enable this this community to continue to grow and move on to the next phase, Microsoft has created a new software package called Microsoft Robotics Studio, a platform that, like Windows, will provide a common ground to develop applications of the future. Now, this we believe this will enable a new generation of robots that I'm going to ask David Lee from my team to come out here and demonstrate for us today. Hello, David. What we brought for you to demonstrate today is one of a new generation of PC robots. Uh, the We're going to specifically introduce, here he comes right now, the Eugen uh, iRuby Q from Eugen, Ro uh, from Eugen Robotics Company in South Korea. This robot features a number of fi similar features that you would have in your average PC. He has the same class of processor that you would find in your PC in memory, speakers, a camera, uh, his Wi-Fi, a number of similar characteristics. But he's also very different than your PC. He has more advanced functions that you would find on your PC. You'll see that he has a mobile base down here. Uh, he has a touch screen for easy interaction. He also has uh, a nice facial expression so he can smile at you in the morning. His base allows him to recharge himself automatically. You don't have to go plug him in when you need to, when he needs to recharge. So a very new generation of technology. Now the question is though, what can we do with this kind of technology? What are the applications that we might imagine for this kind of a robot? The first and most obvious is remote telepresence. We already see 
see this kind of uh, usage of robots today. We're exploring the planet Mars, for example, in this way. Or we find that soldiers in Iraq are using the iRobot uh, Packbot to look for uh, IEDs. Or police departments or fire departments might use that kind of technology in very hazardous situations. Or the next time you're in a hospital, your doctor can't make it across town to make the rounds to come visit you. You may be visited through from, from him through a remote presence robot such as the InTouch Health robot which is already being used in a number of hospitals already. So, are we, we have no camera. We, we were hoping to show you a demonstration of this, but our wireless control is apparently not allowing us to receive the signal from iRobyQ's camera. But we can show some other demonstrations of some other things. But before I do that, let me talk about one of the areas of remote presence and robots that I think will be very powerful for us in the future. And that is allowing us to take care of our increasing population of senior citizens. You know, in the U.S. already, there are over 40 million uh, senior citizens over the age of 65. How are we going to stay in touch with them, check up on them, make sure they take their medications? Well, I believe that robotics is a great way for us, to, for them to stay in contact not only with their families but their healthcare providers and maintain their independence and let us all live a more comfortable uh, a lifestyle. What are other kinds of applications so we might see with this? Well, I'll come over here maybe and show you that we can get information because iRobiQ is as fully capable as your PC. We can ask him for information such as we would find on a standard web browser. Let's say we wanted to ask him about the weather today. You select from your favorite cities. And I want to find out what the weather back in Seattle is like today. Here is the latest weather for Seattle, Washington. Sprinkles. Uh, well, we didn't actually get the display, but he at least told us what the weather was like. What would you like to do now? We could get other kinds of information from iRobiQ. We could get information such as our stocks, the latest sports, uh, other kinds of information. We could also use him to play games with us, or because he because he is PC enabled, we could use him to tap into our media center library. So let's ask him to play some music for us. Select the entertainment you would like. Music. What would you like to select from your music library? Songs. I'll pick a nice song here, one of my favorites here. So now our music, my music doesn't, I don't have to go to my music. My music can come, here we go. Just had to bring up this microphone. So my music, my tunes can follow me around the house. Rather than me going to have to go choose them, they can come and I can choose them. So a variety of different applications like this. We'll turn him off right, right now so I can continue to tell you about some of the other things that we see coming. This is the first generation of PC-based robots. The next generation we see coming is a set of robots that not only have this kind of mobile capability, but also have arms, such as the such as the U-Bot 5 that you can see from the University of Massachusetts, pictured right here. This robot could do a variety of different things because it has two arms and so it can manipulate things within the environment. Here you see it trying to uh, try out for the Mariners. Not sure he's quite ready to do that quite yet. The other thing he might be able to do is go fetch things. Thing. We pick things up off the floor, open doors. Maybe he could even fetch my favorite beverage or maybe clean up after me after I finish my favorite beverage. In short, in summary, Microsoft is using its innovation and its technology to try to enable this so this generation of robots will be in your home very soon so that we all will be able to live with this kind of technology in our homes and our workspaces. We invite you to come over and to hear more about it if you'd like to get a close-up look of iRobiQ or some of his other cousins, come over to our booth here. If you don't have time, we welcome you to come out to visit us at our website to find out more about what we're doing about robotics. Thank you very much for your time today.